This presentation will explore how Joan Littlewood's 1963 production of Oh What a Lovely War at the Royal Court Theatre was influenced by Brecht's epic and dialectic theatre. First of all, Littlewood's underlying aim for the ensemble, as reported in the essay, A Concise Introduction to Joan Littlewood, which is on the specialist theatre education website Digital Theatre Plus, was to be able to present any play so dynamically that even the theatrically illiterate would respond and would relate their response to the political situation, to their social identity and history. This starting point is already in parallel with Brecht, as opposed to some productions which may look Brechtian. Oh, what a lovely war does employ those techniques, but more importantly, develops out of the same ethos. These are some of the characteristics which can result in a production being labelled Brechtian, which are illustrated in the production Oh, what a lovely war. The Fremdung's effect or distancing or making the familiar strange, just as it's done here with soldiers wearing the Pierrot costumes, is non-illusory and it's presenting the situation rather than mimicking or representing the situation. Spaz or fun, using satire and comedy to ridicule the ones in power. We are going to walk through the enemy lines. Shattering the fourth wall, where the audience is communicated with directly. Complete victory! The use of projections, just as Brecht used them to present documentary material, is referred to by Kenneth Tynan in his review of the original production in The Observer in 1963, where he comments that a terrible counterpoint is soon set up between the romanticism of the lyrics, all gaiety and patriotic gusto, and the facts of carnage in France, illustrated by stools of the trenches and news reports flickering across an electrified ribbon screen. The non-linear presentation of the story, or montage effect, is also mentioned by Tynan in his review. The cast perform a montage of brisk, laconic sketches rooted in improvisation but stripped of all irrelevant detail. Joan Littlewood's Oh What a Lovely War consciously tried to communicate a similar message to the one Brett was trying to communicate. Their aims point in the same direction, where capitalist society is critiqued, theatre is made accessible to the workers rather than the bourgeois members of society, and their communist ideas are seen as a threat. However, Despite having communism in common with Brecht and using similar techniques to bring her theatre to the working class population, Littlewood brushes over the connection in her autobiography, Joan's Book. The introduction is written by Philip Headley, who worked as an assistant to Littlewood for a couple of years and was a director at the Theatre Royal for 25 years, and he quotes Alt, a theatre director, costume and set designer, as saying in a lecture... I'm not sure how much she would have seen her work as influenced by Brecht. Rather, it was concurrent. 20 years' experience of working in left-wing theatre groups in the north of England brings an ideology very close to Brecht's, but this time it's the rough and energetic side of Brecht. He then goes on to examine the staging of Oh, What a Lovely War. Her idea to present verbatim and improvised scenes of atrocities from the First World War juxtaposed with popular musical songs of the time. Her ideas are as rich and politically sophisticated as Brecht's irresistible rise of Arturo Yui. Both Brecht and Littlewood are like montage magpies accumulating material and working in an ensemble to create something playful and entertaining with an extremely important and serious message. So much as Littlewood might have been said to be dismissive of any connection with Brecht's work, there are very strong parallels between the two of them. The last words of this presentation go to Joan Littlewood who, in a letter to Encore magazine in 1961, two years before Oh What a Lovely War opened, wrote, In Shaftesbury Avenue, or in the Brett Theatre, it's all the same. The theatre should be made up of individuals, not pawns. Keep your wits, develop your talent, take over the theatre, which now belongs to the managers or to the landlords. 
Let's stop this waste of human ability.